you are about to meet a nationally renowned artist, a terrific landscape and wildlife artist, and it's going to be a red letter day for you. Please welcome Catherine Mapes Turner. Hey, Catherine. Hello, Eric. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm glad to have you here. We love uh, we love your work, and we love to see what you're going to do for us today. What's what's the plan? Well, um, I'm excited. I'm excited to invite you all into my studio here in um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I'm, well, I bet you probably have a little snow there. We ha we got 24 inches of snow this weekend, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> 24 inches. Yeah, yeah. So we are. Um, we found ourselves in the middle of winter, which is a, is a, is a very beautiful time of year here. Um, it's also this particular time of year is when our migration is happening. So this morning on my walk, I heard a bunch of elk migrating and bugling. And that's one of the things that I love most about my life here in Jackson hole is that we live right in the middle of this amazing ecosystem. And we're surrounded by wildlife and stunning, um, stunning landscape. So I feel really, really fortunate this time here. Things really quiet down so that you can hear the heartbeat of nature. And that really informs what I do. And, and you're not getting out and painting much in the winter. You're painting indoors in the winter? No, Eric. I paint indoors. I'm a delicate flower. I don't go out when it's 14 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> so, so I'm going to invite everybody this time of year into my studio and there's really um i love going out and painting on, in plein air but i also love my studio time yeah. and the reason because that's when i can really slow down explore my own creativity and explore different materials and different techniques uh -huh. um i can work bigger which is also really fun to do so that's uh, that's kind of how my year goes. In the summers, I'm out in the field, and then I and then I bring those studies, I bring my photos, and I and I, and I bring them inside where it's cozy, yeah. and then I work those into bigger pieces. You're gathering source material that you can use all year long. Yeah, our that's winters cool. are long, so you need to get a lot of source material. So you're going to do something fun for us today. What's that going to be? Yeah, it's going to be really fun. So I have a pretty broad range of what I do. You mentioned I like to do landscapes. I also like to do animals, specifically wildlife and horses. I also like it to, um, I started out as a watercolor painter and sort of that, that was one of my great teachers. Watercolor was one of my great teachers. And the reason is because of two things. First of all, you, you, you have to know how to draw with watercolor, um, draw and design, because there's just, it's not, it's so unforgiving. So you can't really hide. Then the other thing that watercolor taught me is to roll with spontaneity, let the paint do its, do its thing. And then, and that really kept, keeps things fresh. Those are the watercolors we love, right? The also, ones that are it really, it really makes you anticipate things further in advance. Yeah. You have to you're working backwards, right? Yep, you got to really know what you're what you're what you're set out to do. You have a have to have a plan, and then you have to be really willing to roll with whatever the paint brings. It's not watercolor is kind of like twenty twenty. It's important <laughs> that we have a plan, but you never really know what's going to happen. <laughs> still. Still, on no. a daily basis. So watercolor is great for anybody who's a control freak. It is a good life lesson. One um, one thing I've been exploring a bunch lately is how to incorporate the things I learned in my watercolor mm -hmm. into my oil paints. And that that kind of brings up an interesting segue. I I am uh, I'm an oil painter mostly. And mm -hmm. I've decided to take up watercolor because I just can't take my paints everywhere I go. I still, I think I still prefer to paint in oil, but I do, uh, I, I, I'm now going through that struggling process where I'm trying to learn watercolor and I'm trying to learn to let go and, and let the paint kind of do its thing. Um, so because we have this big watercolor conference coming up, uh, which is called Watercolor Live, 
what is your best advice for painters who might not necessarily think of themselves as watercolorists? What would they learn if they were to participate in something like that? You learn about um, watercolor teaches you a lot about design, values, and edges. That's what mm -hmm. I love about painting watercolor. Oh. Um, I uh, will, and I just happen to be a real, um, I really love drawing and I see the value of drawing and watercolor is a wonderful medium to mm. incorporate line drawing. Um, who doesn't love paper, the feeling of paper, the texture of paper. But what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to bring together the world of watercolor and the world of oil paint. Really? Yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. Oh my okay. gosh, it'll be so much fun. All right, Catherine, you're back. I'm back. <laughs> Thank you for those kind words, Eric. That was very sweet of you. Oh, your work is beautiful. Thanks. So I'm uh, I'm going to put you on full screen so we can see what you're working on here. It looks like you, is this a, a bear, polar bear? What is it? This is a bear. Um, like I said, I, I'm really blessed to live at the on the border of Grand Teton National Park, and we love our wildlife. And this particular bear is um, is one that we know by name. We have her. She's known as a bear named Blondie. Oh my! And she's a, she's a grizzly bear, and she's um, she's she's spectacular. She's very she's got very light light highlights in her coat, and. Um, but she would I, still rip your face off if you got too close. Right? Yes, especially if you got close to her cub. So uh, this is a photo that I took this spring when she came out of hibernation. And the light was hitting her. It was it's, it was kind of the end of the day and it was hitting her just um, just perfectly. So I got I got really lucky. I did have a long lens. <laughs> so you got to be careful. But um, bears are bears are amazing. They're, um, they're omnivores. They're of course, terrific mothers. Um, the, whenever I'm doing wildlife, which I'm doing more and more all the time, I'm doing just really enjoying painting animals and wildlife, especially because I live where I do. I always think about the essence of that animal. And so what's the essence of a grizzly bear? They're that what's their anatomy? What's their form like? Um, and one of the things that make a grizzly bear a grizzly bear is that they have a, a big round full face. They have a lot of contours in their face, a lot of different planes to describe and include. And that and those different planes catch the light in different ways. So it's really important to get that accurate and to have the values describe those planes and the way the light's hitting it. The other thing about a grizzly bear is that they're very, especially when just coming out of hibernation, they're really fluffy. They're, they've got a great thick coat. And so they're not, they're not sleek like a horse or a greyhound. You've got to get those edges to describe a bear coat. So a grizzly bear, one, how do you know a grizzly bear from black bear? You can't really rely on color because there's very light cinnamon black bears and there's dark grizzly bears. So one of the very distinguishing features is this big hump. And that's because a grizzly bear is an incredible digger. They dig for bugs and they dig for roots. And, um, and so when you see that big hump, that is, that's when you know you have a grizzly bear. Um, the, other, the other thing you look for are those contours in the face. Thing about grizzly bears that are really interesting is that, in addition to humans and apes, they 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 walk on their full feet. Dogs and horses have their elbow halfway up what we consider their leg, but or their their heel. But a grizzly bear walks on their heel, mm. just like we do, and just like apes do. So they have they have really neat feet. That, that are very expressive and ones that that we can relate to. Um, so I actually did a little thumbnail for this grizzly bear and included how expressive those those feet can be in the paws. All right. Got to watch out those. Um, <clears throat> and those. did you do that thumbnail in watercolor? So that's what we're going to talk about today is the um, 
this particular this particular material this is an oil painting on oil paint paper so i started out as a watercolorist so this is one of my watercolors um of a horse of, that was born on my family's ranch just before it started to walk it was just a couple of hours old in this in this way but you'll see how how you can really explore and, and abstract your edges it's really fun this is a this is this is an oil painting and this is an oil painting oh really it looks like watercolor it looks like watercolor <clears throat> it's all because of this this paper this paper that's been invented by arches is called oil paint paper and i'm wild for it right now and the reason is because thanks to this paper i've been able to marry my watercolor experience and my oil paint experience so when you showed those those photos, Eric. So um, if you can think, remember back to those photos, the um, the oil, the the painting of the mountains was an oil painting, plenty oil painting. The robin was an oil mm -hmm. painting. Mm -hmm. The cougar was a watercolor. And the hummingbird was oil. That's an oil painting. That's an oil painting. Yeah. But these all, and all, so the cougar was watercolor? Watercolor. Okay, this is oil. You got it. This is? You have to guess. I'm going to guess it's oil on water paper. It's oil. It's oil on regular, mm. uh, on canvas. Really, you get a very unique look out of that, though. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, this looks to me like oil. But it's on water paper. That's oil on um, gesso board. Gesso, okay. And yeah. then what about this? That's oil on panel. Yeah. All right. So I'm having a I'm having a big mashup right now in my work, what? and I'm loving what? it. It's um. So what we're going to do today is we're going to I'm going to talk about this oil paint paper from Arches and why you should try it. And I don't get any endorsements, so um, I'm just a big fan. What are the advantages of working on oil paint paper with oils as opposed to just doing a watercolor painting? Do you want to guess? No. Okay. The advantages are for, um, first of all, you can work a lot bigger, at least for me. I live in a really dry habit. Uh, it's, it's arid here. And I get this oil paint paper in five foot wide rolls that are 10 yards long. Really? So I have a ball. I roll out this giant piece of paper and I can just go to town. Do you mount and, it on something when you decide to paint? So I'm going to talk about that because that's one of the other advantages and something I've had to really invent because it's a little paper that big is kind of, it's a, it's a thing, right? What do you do with a piece of paper that's eight? I've done eight foot tall paintings with this technique. Wow. Um, but what the, what you can do is you can, you have a really long open time when you're working with oils, it doesn't dry so fast. So you can do an eight foot long wash and it's not going to dry instantly here in Wyoming. So that's a huge advantage. The other advantage is, is that because it's oil paint and not watercolor, you can varnish it and mount it on a, on a cradle board and not put it behind glass. So this is, if you can hear, I mounted this on a, um, on a cradle board. So now it's a rigid surface. You can kind of see, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, but it has that beautiful surface of paper. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna feel a lot like painting a watercolor painting. And then I'll put about, when I'm finished with the piece, I'll put about a dozen layers of um of varnish on it and i'll float many. just so that i know that it's not gonna be it's protected i put right. okay. i just protect it like crazy okay. um and then i float frame it and you're done so it's really neat it's a really uh, it's a it's a, been a really fun thing to explore. There are a few disadvantages for your, for the oil painters in the crowd. 
you might not, um, it, it's going to be very absorbent as opposed to what you're used to with a canvas, with a gessoed canvas or an oil primed canvas, especially. If it, you find that this paper is too absorbent, my recommendation would be to varnish it first before you start painting with a cry, cry, Krylon, Krylon yeah. spray varnish. Yeah. And that'll that'll make it a little less absorbent. I'll you know, seal it. Daniel Graves at the Florence Academy does a lot of uh, oil paintings on watercolor paper. And uh, probably because he wasn't aware of this, but he'll take watercolor paper and he'll varnish both sides of it. And that way you're not, it's not absorbing the moisture from the back. And then he'll do his oil paintings on top of it. So very similar. That's fantastic. Yeah, you don't have to do this for some reason sized in a way that you don't have to varnish it. Um, and so it, they, it Arches has made it super, super easy and uh, ready to go. The other, let's go back to some of the advantages that, that we have working with this. Um, you have a longer open time, but you also, with we love oil paints. Why do we love oil paints? We love them because of their rich color. We love them because of their viscosity and the way that you can work wet into wet. You can you can get really juicy with thick paint and impasto work. You can also layer. So that's you can bring all the things that you love about oil paint to this technique. Okay. Well, we're anxious to see it. We'll get started. Okay. I will tell you that we have Catherine. We have um, we have Egypt looking. Let's see who else we have. I've, I haven't really checked in this morning to see, but um, a lot of people across the United States. Um, Carella, I don't know where that is. Catan from Carella. Let's see. New Zealand. South Africa. Wow, got a lot of people in there. Well, that's, that's amazing. And that's exciting. Welcome. Yeah, everybody um, should put where you're from so we can see. And also know that we're, we're going to be giving away prizes. And if this is your first time tuning in, we give away prizes every day. Northern Ontario, welcome. Alaska, so Australia, India. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you start talking. Norway. Hey, Norway. Welcome. Egypt again. All right. So what are you doing? Okay. So here I'm, I'm working with, um, with an army's, our, our arm palette. The other thing, a little bit about studio safety. I always wear a glove on my, um, on the hand that I'm going to wipe with just because I'm going to use a lot of solvent. I always use Gamsol for my solvent um, just because of safety reasons. So that's an, um, cause I'm gonna use a lot of solvent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really think about values here. I'm gonna think about value and temperature as I'm going through the different, different portions of this bear. Um, and I'm gonna control a lot of that with um, the, the intensity of the, of the, this is the word I want the intensity, um, the darkness, lightness, and the and the temperature of it. I can I can thin the paint down to control that. So um, I'm thinking about I'm just gonna keep. So do you have it? Is you actually have that sketched in or are you doing this freehand? Oh yeah, I did. That's um, that's worth mentioning. Um, with this, it's important to. I always sketch it in. Um, one of the things that I'm really working on more and more now is. I mean, I've been painting for 25 years, professionally, and I feel like you can always work on your drawing skills. I just finished a sabbatical, a two week sabbatical where all I did was draw for two weeks. I drew, I drew animals from life for two weeks. Uh -huh. um, and I just found that to be so valuable to be able to draw them from life 
um, you're never going to regret working on your drawing skills. Absolutely. Hello, Costa Rica, Sweden, Czechoslovakia. That's new. Welcome. Malaga, Malaga, Spain. Um, Scotland. This is fun. This is amazing. <laughs> so can you kind of tell us what you're doing? Yeah, so um, we talked about how grizzly bears have this amazing coat. And um, I am thinking about my edges. I'm thinking about values and I'm thinking about edges. I have this drawn in. I have my reference. Um, and I have, I have a certain amount of time when it comes to um, how much I can, I can sort of manipulate the paint. So I'm thinking about um, how dark is it? How light is it? How warm is it? And how cool is it? And what are those edges like? And that's pretty much how I'm gonna proceed through this whole piece. Very patient hand. You know, <laughs> New York, I guess I would think by now I'd be I'd be painting faster and I um I don't I don't paint very fast. One of the um one of the advice I got from Scott Burdick is never work faster than you can be accurate. Right. You can lose control. Yeah. It's like driving a car at high speeds. Yeah, exactly. And when you're painting animals or people, um, because of how much we, how important it is to rely on accuracy, it's really important to take a deep breath, slow down and get it right. Take the time to get it right. I have to mention this. This is so funny. Barbara Tapp is sitting in a dentist chair having dental work done, and she's watching this. She said, what a great distraction. <laughs> oh, Barbara, I'm so glad we could distract you today. Think about, think about painting, the fun of painting. Oh, my goodness. We're, we're thinking about you. <laughs> So I'm just kind of pulling the paint with me as I go. So you're painting really, really thin. I'm painting so thin. Yeah, because I can always go in later. And um, that's one of the one of the things that watercolor taught me is um, these thin washes. And I love doing that. I love bringing in um, layers. So are you that, using a watercolor brush or are you using it? What, what are you using? I'm using, of course, we just adore our, um, our rosemary brushes. I, she invented a brush that changed my painting and those are these Comer brushes. What are they called? Comer? Comer. Yeah. A comb? Yep. And what she's done, I'll try and show you. Um, let's see, where's my camera here? Yeah. She's put <laughs> just a few. Everything's um, backwards, yeah. Yeah, they're, 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 you can get such a soft, soft touch with so it. It looks like it's kind of cut out and it's. Yeah, what out. she's done is she's put a bunch of, um, she fills the ferrule with, with fibers and hairs, and then she combs half of them back. I see. So it's, it's just a super delicate. Um, and I'm almost using exclusively comber brushes now because mm -hmm. of how sensitive you can get. Yeah, perfect for that. Yeah, if I go in later and I get, I, I put in um, thicker paint, I'll use different brushes. But for this, there's nothing better. Oh my gosh, changed my painting when I found these brushes. It's, you barely touch the canvas. You barely, it, um, it's just like a whisper, the paint. 
Somebody asked, why don't you use water-based oils? You know, I that's a that's a really excellent question. And I will confess I've never once tried water-based oils. Well, I tried them once and they and they felt gummy to me. But um maybe they've come they've come a long way since then. Well, it depends. I, I think it's it the brands are different. Some of the brands use a soap as an emulsifier and that tends to get gummy. Some use other things as an emulsifier, but um and and also, they can get gummy if you use too much water. They have special medium for them. I think like anything else, it's just a matter of of knowing how to use them. As a matter of fact, tomorrow, uh, our demo tomorrow will be on water-based oils with Lori McNee. So maybe we'll learn about that tomorrow. Oh, perfect. That would be good. Do you have a um, brush in your mouth? Is that what you do? I know. Not, manufacturers not. tell you not to do that. You know? <laughs> See, this is the problem with having you guys watch me paint. <laughs> Yeah, no pressure painting in front of many I mean, thousands of people. By the yeah. time this, by the time the week is over, you'll have 10, 11,000 viewers have watched it. Well, it's it's very exciting to think about meeting new people. I want to invite everybody to my website. Please sign up for my newsletter there because I'd love to stay in touch. Um, I'll put it up on screen so everybody can see it. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Um, you can see a lot more pieces on my website with this technique. Um, you also have some prints available, don't you? I do. This particular um, this particular medium lends itself to some beautiful giclées. We make really small editions of fifty, so there it's a it's a small edition, and you can't you can't tell the difference between an original and a, and um, these giclées and we're going to roll out a whole new selection really soon. So you don't want to miss out on that. I, I really like the delicate um, strokes you're getting in there. Oh, really thanks. I'm glad you can beautiful. see them. I wanted to get everybody close enough. I would have never, uh, just looking at that, I would have never guessed it was oil. I know. I fool a lot of people, yeah. Eric. Um, my, I have a gallery in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And if you're ever in town, please come by and see me. These, they're really fun to see in person because some of them are quite large, you know. And is so it to your see your own them, gallery or is it someone else's? It's my own gallery. It's called Turner Fine Art. Okay. And these, they're impressive to see in person because of their size, you know, they're eight feet tall. So um, seeing them in person and, and you can't tell, I, People come in and they don't know what they're looking at. They don't know if they're looking at a giant watercolor or what. They can't. I'll tell you another thing that I've had, just, Eric, that I've been having so much fun with is using this technique or using this paper with oil stick. Oh, so yeah. that feels like, to me, it feels like rolling out a giant piece of paper and playing with a huge crayon and so i've been doing these drawings with oil stick adding solvent and dissolving some of the lines and some of the areas into a wash so you get line and wash and i do animals with these big giant drawings of animals on this paper uh, oil sticks are wonderful. We have a video out that um, Rose Franson just did, and she's using a lot of oil sticks in it. And I just tried them. I bought some about a year ago, but I just tried them on a painting I'm working on now, and they were so much fun. And you get these these random marks that you can't get with a paintbrush, which I really love. I'll take a little break, and I'll show everybody just in case. I don't know what we're talking about, but... Um... Here's an oil stick. That's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. So you just, um, you can take a little break here. This is from Shiva. Uh -huh. Shiva. These are Sennelier. Uh -huh. So these have a paper wrapper that you can unwrap as you go down. I like these because you can take the whole, you can take the whole case off. And then all of a sudden, 
you've got this big chunk of oil paint in your hand that yeah. you can just go to town with. <laughs> so that's really, it works out really great on this paper. And I'll show everybody what I'm talking about. So here's, here's a, just a piece of scrap yeah. paper. Um, this is sometimes you got to charge it a little bit, but here's a, here's that oil stick paper, and then you can take some solvent. Nice. And dissolve it into a wash. And yeah. You're maintaining some of the line. Yeah. Very cool. It's cool. If everybody, well, if I had um, if I haven't convinced you yet to try this, I'm working hard to do just that. Well, you're going to create a bunch of competition for yourself if everybody starts doing what you're doing. Well, you know what I found, and this is all what you've uh, what you've created here, um, Eric. Is that it's one big family, and we're all here to just learn from one another and share. And um, you encourage that sense of generosity with what you're doing. I really appreciate it. You've created such a community. Um, I don't know when you sleep. Uh, sleep is overrated. <laughs> sleep is for the dead. <laughs> you sleep when you're dead. That's uh, that's what I used to say in college, which I'm not sure always worked. Um, But really it's really nice soft edges on that. That's what I like. I like to just have there be the edge is just like a whisper. A whisper. Mm -hmm. I like that. So I don't know what OSHA would say about this, but I've put this Gamsol in a spray bottle and I'm careful with it, but I, uh, there's, you can also add the solvent that way. I would wear a mask if I were I doing that. I think that's probably the better way to do it. So, but see what that does? Do you oh, see yeah. this? Oh, this yeah, you really right here? yeah, beautiful. This is fun. <laughs> You're learning like something it. new every day. Good. I'm so glad. I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm will just... you like watercolor? You'll leave your lights light like you have in the face where you're just kind of letting the paper do the work for the lights. Yeah, I really love I, I I love the texture of this paper and the white of the, and the white of the paper, and that's I always have loved that in watercolor too. All right, so I'm going to ask you a, just a really blunt question. Yeah. Since you're since you're using oils and and going for a watercolor look, why not just use watercolor? That's a that's a great question, and um, the 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 truth of the matter is is that where I live. There's a, there's real limits to watercolor, um, because it just dries so fast. I see. Yeah. We're in a really really dry climate here, and I would not be able to work that edge as long as I'm working it. Um, the other thing is is that I don't love having to put my watercolors behind glass, um, especially when you're working that big and you yeah. work. You know, yeah. probably it becomes expensive. It's hard to ship. A lot so, of people are not putting it behind glass now. Watercolors. They're coating it and so on. They're putting watercolors not behind glass. Yeah. Some are, some are, and some are varnishing and so on. Yeah. The thing is that's nice about this is that um, once it dries, it's really durable so you yeah. don't have to worry about you can varnish it you can get it wet um they're not they're just not as fragile as a watercolor i will eric i will always paint watercolor it's been it's my first love but um this is this has a lot of possibilities and a lot of a, a lot of benefits that watercolor 
um, the water has watercolor has its limitations. The other advice I was given to by uh, my my first teacher, Skip Whitcomb, is to use lots of paint. What a great teacher! He's such a great teacher. I was fortunate to start working with him when I was in high school, and it was really, just, yeah, I know. I just I thought he was in Colorado. Is that where you went to high school? Um, no, he came to Jack. He would come to Jackson and teach. Um, because it's such a it's such a great place to paint plein air. Um, and I just got lucky to meet him when he was teaching here. And then I would go down to Colorado and study with him. He's brilliant. Later on. Hey, welcome New Zealand and South Africa. We're glad you're here today. Okay, One big happy family of artists. That's what we are. <laughs> How many layers until you're done? Isn't that the age old question? How do we know when we're done? Well, do you do a lot of layers of this or will you kind of? Um, I, yeah, I'd like to, I'm, I am known. I, I do so many layers with my work. Um, Would you quickly show your palette again? Some people who tuned in late didn't get a chance to see it. Yeah. I like using an arm palette because that um, that gives me the the ability to step back and yeah. look at my work. I don't. I'm not stuck at a tabaret. And, and it builds muscle. <laughs> it gives you guns like these. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I want to really encourage folks um, to do, and this is another another teacher of mine, John Felsing, is um, always encouraging me to have a, use a mirror and I have um, I use two different ways of using a mirror. I have one of these handheld mirrors um, and what that does is just really is a great way to check your values, check your composition. Then I also have a mirror installed on the opposite wall of my studio from yep. where my easel is and it's a big uh, it's a big 30 by 40 mirror. So so those are the two things I always have with me is my palette in one hand and my mirror in the other. And I'm just kind of always going back and forth, checking things as I go along. It's like having a, it's like having a mentor, a teacher, a, 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 a wise voice. That mirror can, can really show you a lot of things along the way. You can really this that brush is really giving you that that sense of fluffy fur too. Yeah, this is a that's it. There's another Comer brush. This isn't a rosemary brush, but um, edges are they're so important to me, and they're so fun to work on, in my opinion. This is always fun. I love my job to get to do this and watch people every day and and ask questions. What are you working on with your your painting right now, Eric? What it what is it that? Well, when I was up in at Fall Color Week, um, a gallery owner came up to visit one of the other artists. And, and of course, at Full Color Week, we all lay out our, our work from the week. And um, surprisingly, he said uh, he liked my work and he wanted me in his gallery. So I, uh, I got invited into yet another gallery. And then uh, another uh, person who was up there also invited me into their gallery. So now I'm uh, I'm trying to come up with enough time to you talk about never sleeping. I'm in here till midnight every night painting and uh, trying to get some things into them so they have some some work for Christmas. Get a little extra Christmas money. Congratulations. That's great. So what, what are you working on now? What's the painting? What's the subject of the painting you're working well, on? Well, I'm working on landscapes. Uh, 
right now. I um, I just I finished up a couple of pieces I had here, and then I'm uh, I'm working on a thirty by forty uh, landscape, uh, and it's almost done. And then I, it's a basically a fall color scene that I'm using a plein air study as a as a uh, you know to guide me. And uh, I don't typically use photographs anymore. I've gotten to the point where I can't paint from photos anymore. I have to paint from studies, but I have hundreds of them around here that I need to do paintings from. So not a problem. That's fantastic. That is really, congratulations. It's fun. Thankfully, I don't have to make my living as an artist. I might starve, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> at this point i don't know what else i would do who would hire me <laughs> no. i have that problem that's why i work for myself <laughs> nobody would, would want me so now i'm just um i just keep thinking about values and temperature and for this particular bear i really i am enjoying the play of warm and cool um the 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 color gray is um i'm i'm making this with a lot of um burnt umber and french ultramarine blue and then some um some burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. So just kind of playing with with all the possibilities that are all the ranges that are that are available with just those three colors. I also have some um, yellow ochre and and then the white of the paper and the, and it's a it's, so that's a super limited palette for this particular piece. Um, but I I I the you know the benefit of Limited palette, of course, is then you have a harmonious piece, a uh, painting, and I think that those are the paintings that I love the most. The kind of the tonal. And in spite of the fact that I know that, I just, I'm just so seduced by color. I just keep buying color. <laughs> <laughs> it is the candy shop. You go um, into the. Williamsburg sent out some samples to people who were um, part of Realism Live and. Uh, so I just got some, some new colors that I'm trying. It's like, oh, I love this. It's so much fun. It is. Color is so fun, which is but, why. But you have to be careful about harmony. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. It's why we paint. I believe painters ultimately go to painting because we love color. We need to remember how important drawing is, design. But the original seduction, I think, is color. Yeah. I think it's interesting to watch your brush strokes because sometimes you actually use your paintbrush like a rubber stamp, and then sometimes you use it like a paintbrush. <laughs> you know, um, where, like when you were putting in that edge, you just kind of, you, you just laid it in with no, no stroke. Yeah, and that's because I really, I love what the brush will do for me that way. You can... Uh, you can get this illusion of hair. Um, another really special teacher of mine was um, Ned Jacob. Do you know Ned, Ned Jacob's work? Oh, yeah. I have his book, as a matter of fact. It's very hard to get. Well, I was really, really fortunate very early on to be able to study painting the horse with him. And he, uh, when we're, when you're when painting and drawing the horse, you think a lot about the direction of the way the hair grows, because that'll, that'll affect how the light hits it, the sheen, the, um, so when I'm painting animals, I always think about that, which direction is the hair growing? And that is oftentimes the, um, the way, the way that I drive my brush or hold my brush is the direction that the hair is growing in. And that relates to really what painting is all about, I think. And that is 
um, painting is, is drawing with paint as opposed to an, another instrument. So um, here I'm, I'm working a lot with big shapes for sure. But I'm also thinking about um, dr the draw drawing this this figure, this form. How can I draw it? How can I draw the um, this particular? You can see with this photo. Look at the patterns in the form that the fur oh, makes. Yeah. See the lines yeah. that they yeah. have. Pattern, patterns in the fur. Yeah, look at the center of the bear. Look at how those wonderful the different yeah. patterns that it that it, that it holds. And I'm not a photorealist, so I'm not going to paint every hair on this bear, but I'm always trying to capture the essence of it. Mm -hmm. And in and of itself, it's a beautiful abstracted absolutely kind of thing that going on there. What an inspiration it can be. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to pull the plug on you, Catherine. We're just getting started. Our bear only has two legs, Eric. Yeah, well, you know, it, I, I could give you another 40 hours. <laughs> well, please, everybody, sign up for my website, and you'll see this this piece finished. Yeah, so the website is katherinemapesturner.com, and uh, you can go there and find uh, her prints and her paintings and lots of other stuff. You can sign up for her newsletter, right? Yep. I'd well, love to stay in touch with everyone. Thumbs up and applause. This was absolutely fabulous. It's it's nice to see this. You know, we have had we've had Joanne Mangion painting uh, dogs, but we haven't had anybody painting an animal. So that's a first. And this is also a first painting uh, oil in kind of a watercolor style. So that's a first. And e every day we're learning something new. So Catherine, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me, Eric. Have a we, wonderful uh, day, everybody. We'll have you back someday. And, and of course, you can post the finished painting in the comments tonight or tomorrow, whenever you want to, people. Yeah. That'd be fun. I'll keep right, painting great. today. And 